42 Gore with 270 needle to win. No, the needle has not moved for quite a little while now, but any one of these states, particularly among Iowa, Wisconsin, and Oregon, could go in one column or another pretty quickly, and who's to say that Florida couldn't as well, although the general expectation is Florida may not finally, officially be decided for quite some time yet. Gloria Borgia, I want to ask you, I know you're following the money, but I've never seen a town where winning is everything more than in Washington, D.C. when it comes to politics. So if George Bush wins, as it now looks as he very well can do, he's going to find in Washington that people hang on him like a coat rack, and Al Gore uh, is going to be uh, maybe gone to Hawaii. Well, uh, he's also got a lot of uh, political IOUs himself to pay back. You know, his campaign has been supported uh, a great deal by the oil and gas industry, the manufacturing industry, and the drug companies. So, you know, they're going to be looking at his legislative agenda. You talk about hanging on him. I think they're going to be meeting with him uh, as soon as, uh, as he takes the oath of office, if indeed he does win, Dan. 246, 242, 270 needed to win. Florida, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Oregon, polls closed, have been closed for a long time, no decision yet. Bob Schieffer, in the Senate seat, still not called. As of 1.08 uh, a.m. New York time, let's look them over, run down those uncalled, and where that leaves us in the race to control the Senate. Well, not only is the race out in Michigan where Deb uh, Debbie Stabenow, who's a congressman running against Spence Abraham, the Republican senator, not only has that not been called, we think it is so close, Dan, that they won't even show one or the other leading. We just uh, list it uh, as too close to call. Very much the same condition uh, down in Missouri, where you have Senator John Ashcroft, the Republican, running against a dead man, Mel Carnahan, who was killed in an airplane crash. Uh, still that one. Too close to call. It's so close they will not say at this point, the people who analyze these things, whether either one of them is leading. So at this point, we have the Republicans have lost a net two seats. The Democrats have picked up a net two. Uh, that brings the margin down to 5248. If the Democrats win these two seats, it's going to be a 50-50 tie in the U.S. Senate. And we repeat again for emphasis, should George Bush win, that means Dick Cheney, the vice president, would uh, settle any ties in the Senate. May I say one other thing too, Dan, and that is we're seeing the demographics in the Senate changing. We've already had two women elected, Hillary Rodham Clinton, Maria Cantwell out in Washington State. There are nine women senators now. That brings it up to 11. If these two races uh, go the Democratic way, we will have 13 women in the Senate. That's the most we've ever had. Swinging our attention back to the presidential race in the states where Nader has been a, a, a major factor, no other way to put it, in the states undecided as of this hour, Wisconsin, Nader's been running uh, 4 or 5% of the Wisconsin vote. Uh, that's one reason it's close and undecided with 11 electoral votes. And in Oregon with 7 electoral votes, Nader running there in the 4 to 5% range and also a reason why Oregon's 7 electoral votes have not yet been decided, although Bush is leading uh, in Oregon with uh, something more than 50% of the votes uh, in and counted there. Uh, Ed, uh, anything stand out in any of the four states that haven't been called? Well, in addition to what you point out about Nader, you've got the, uh, the appeal of two popular governors in a couple of those states. If you look in Wisconsin, uh, Governor Bush is being helped by the state's popular Republican governor, Tommy Thompson. He has a 64% approval rating, and Bush is getting two-thirds of the voters who approve of Tommy Thompson. And in Florida, he's getting help from his brother. George W. Bush is being helped by Jeb, he has a, a favorable rating of 54%, and 77% of those are, go are going for George Bush. I can imagine the conversation if, if Governor Bush has made it to Austin to sit there with his family. I can see his brother turning to him and saying, yo, bro, what's up with Florida? <laughs> hey, you bet. But I uh, want to explain, for, some of you may have been out and coming back. Early in the evening, Florida was colored blue uh, and it put in the uh, Al Gore column. It turned out, uh, we found out later, uh, that there were some suspicious uh, precinct returns uh, from some sections of Florida. We threw those out, and that made the state undecided, uh, in our view. We were among the first to do it, uh, but there's no apology for it. Uh, so Florida is undecided, and in the actual vote count as it's coming in, Bush has taken a very slight lead, and with the absentee ballots, uh, the Bush people are feeling pretty good about it, but they can't feel 
all that good about it because the Gore people keep saying if the votes that are still out are mostly down there in southeast Florida and in our areas, we could yet pull it out. That's the reason this, this whole presidential election uh, swings like that one of those pendulum things just swinging back and forth. But it's been advantage Bush for some little while. Now, some of you may be saying, well, I think I'll take it to bed. It looks like it's Bush. Okay, you're on your own if you do that, because it may be a long while before we know. On the other hand, we could know at any time. That's how it goes in these kinds of elections. Safe to say, no doubt about it now, this has been one of the great close elections in American presidential history, however it turns out now. And let's say one other thing. Uh, we've criticized the polls a lot. About a half billion dollars have been spent this election year on polling. And while the polls were wrong for a lot of the election year, particularly in the primaries, most of them were pretty much on the button when they said this thing was too close to call within the margin of error, and that's exactly the way it's turning out. We'll be right back. Stay here with us. may look and live differently but what they want for their children is very much the same they want to protect and nourish them provide better for them so biotechnology researchers are developing a more nutritious strain of rice it's called gold murder and no one believed you I'm sure it wasn't a dream except the killer a deadly diagnosis clear cbs thursday CBS News election headquarters in New York, 246 for Bush, 242 for Gore, with 270 electoral votes needed to win. The national vote total, which we keep putting up for you because it changes from time to time, but Bush has been clinging to a lead most, if not all, of the evening in the overall popular vote, 49% to 48%. On the electoral map, this is the way things look at the moment, uh, as about 117 New York Eastern time. All the states in red have been carried uh, by George Bush. The blinking ones, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Kentucky, Iowa, uh, no, uh, uh, Tennessee, Ohio, and West Virginia, as well as Nevada and Arizona. All the blinking lights indicate states the Democrats carried in 1996 for the presidential race, and this time George Bush and uh, his campaign have carried them. All the states in blue have been carried by Al Gore. The reason he's still at this late hour in the race is he's carried the big electoral vote states, including New York, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and California, and more recently carried the 11 electoral votes up in Washington. The states in white are now the decisive four. Florida with 25, Iowa with seven, Wisconsin with 11, and Oregon with seven. Bush leads in Oregon, with Nader getting about 4 to 5 percent of the vote. Uh, Gore leads in Wisconsin, but by not very much, by a very small margin, with Nader again getting about 4 to 5 percent of the vote there. Uh, and in Iowa, as a matter of fact, let's uh, punch up Iowa here and see in the presidential race what uh, they tell us in Iowa. Seven electoral votes, 49 percent Gore. 48% Bush with 94% of the precincts reporting, but in a race this close, with 6% of the precincts still out, uh, you'd have to say this thing is as tight as the rusted lug nuts on a 55 Ford. Doesn't get much closer than this. Now, let's go back to other races, uh, taking a look at this Oregon race, the presidential race in Oregon. We said that Nader is running 4 to 5% out there, 4% presently. Uh, Bush leading 49 to 46% with 57% of the precincts reporting. Still a long way to go. Uh, Bush has increased his lead just a tad over the last 45 minutes uh, to one hour. Now, we want to repeat for emphasis because it gets to be fairly important when you look at this uh, overall electoral map. In Florida with 25 electoral votes, Bush can still win. He can go to bed tonight if he hasn't already. And if I know Governor Bush, and I think I know him at least this well, to say he hasn't gone to bed, uh, you can bet the rent money on that. But he can go to bed tonight 
knowing that he's elected president without knowing how Florida comes out, provided Bush wins Iowa, Wisconsin, and Oregon. In other words, without Florida, Bush has to carry all three of the other outstanding states, and he will be the next president. Al Gore, on the other hand, he has to have Florida plus one of the other outstanding states in order to win. Now, the electoral count stands at 246 Bush, 242 Gore, with 270 needed to win. The overall national popular vote, Bush 49 to 48 percent, with four states still out. CBS News, election coverage in New York. Things can happen quickly, folks, can happen at any time, so stay right here with us.